Hello, welcome to Tech Transform. This video is continuation of the last video. Last two videos I have covered the PySpark introduction and in the very uh, in the very last session I have covered about how to set up PySpark environment in Databricks. How we can utilize online Databricks platform to run and write our PySpark <coughs> code. This is uh, the third session. Today we are going to uh, conduct and in this we are going to discuss about uh, data frame basic so this will be the part one and another uh, data frame related stuffs is going to uh, come in part two so data frame is basically uh, it's uh, take mileage uh, when the spark uh, release their 2.0 uh, version it introduced in spark 2.0 before that the rdd was the main point of uh, center of uh, attraction for creating all those uh, uh, data uh, data related stuff because rdd is a uh, more of a unstructured data and data frame is uh, basically a structured way of dealing unstructured data so that's what it's gained a uh, very popularity and now all the machine learning apis in spark they utilizes data frame way rather than having uh, rdd rdd way so let's uh, start our discussions i this uh, in this tutorial let's uh, quickly uh, go to Databricks uh, community edition. Let me open my browser. Type Databricks community edition. <coughs> Log into this. If you haven't watched uh, up to this uh, to set up and everything, I highly recommend go and watch my last two videos. Then you will be understanding more. So let me check whether my cluster is running or not. Yeah, cluster is running. So uh, there is a workspace. Let me create a new notebook. Notebook name I am giving by Spark DF. I am giving alias data frame as DF and this one the part one. Python by Spark cluster is by Spark. Created. Uh, so this is uh, what created. So before that I am going to introduce you what the data set uh, I am going to use today. So this is my data set. This is called uh, people.json file. So it's content to fill name is name is. And in the very f first, uh, it doesn't have age. So age is null. But in other two records, uh, age are there. <coughs> Just keep in mind the data, the, the structure of this uh, data set. We are going to play with this data set and going to understand a couple of operations we are going to perform using this data set. <coughs> In uh, in my last video, I've already uploaded this uh, data set to Spark uh, Data. You can see quickly here. People.json. So this was the, what the data is. So schema and uh, data you just saw here. This is the similar. Same file is uh, loaded here. <coughs> so I'm not going to upload it again because it's already uploaded. If you want to, if if you haven't this uh, data set you just go and upload this like using add data upload file browse work by spark Spark application, yeah. So this one, <coughs> data set, this people addition. Just open it. So it's getting downloaded. If you want to create table, uh, everything inside here, you're going to upload the data. The DBFS data break, uh, break file structure is going to create a table for you. So you can have a preview. You can choose a cluster preview table. it's inferring the table structure using the JSA JSON data and inferring this schema also so you have this data I'm not creating because I've already created so like quick, quickly quickly gents uh, quickly jump to our this workspace okay so uh, the very first step in order to play uh, with spark in order to write a spark code the very first entry point you can say is we have to uh, create a spark session 
So if Park session is a basically a driver script where uh, all the programs you are going to submit uh, to the cluster manager, either Yarn or other Meshos. So let's quickly import all the packages from Pi Spark dot because Spark session is in a dot SQL. So from Pi Spark dot SQL import Spark session. Okay, so this got uh, so this works fine. It's the syntax and everything is right. So we have now a Spark session. In order to create a Spark object of this Spark session, uh, so it's a basic uh, funda is uh, syntax is we used to take the name name is Spark variable name. You can take any name. So Spark is equal to Spark session dot builder dot app name any app name you can give. Here I am giving a uh, df basic one dot get or if you want to complete so you should, should click a uh, tab so get or create spark session dot builder dot app name okay so uh, it's all now we have a spark after that what we want to do we want to create a data frame from the JSON file we uploaded for that df is equal to spark dot read we have JSON file so read dot you can get a lot of things here uh, spark read dot csv sdbc json load option a lot of a lot of format you can read so here I am using this uh, json the path the path remember everything starts uh, the main directory is once you upload the tables file store slash tables slash people dot json so this is a table uh, we created uh, in dbfs so we are utilizing this now let's run it and So data, uh, you can see data frame uh, Spark jobs uh, run successfully, and it created a data frame in order to uh, look how these data frames uh, look. For that, df dot so. So we can see this uh, data, A's and name. First record there was no A's, uh, and name was name were there, and rest of the two records are having age and name. So you can see uh, we what we did we created Spark session using Spark uh, session we we tried to read the JSON file and finally in order to show the actual the data inside the data frame we uh, we have uh, we have typed uh, dot so now there is one more uh, method is coming print schema it will give you the schema so you can see the uh, Spark uh, very well infer the schema. So A is where uh, it it treated A as a long because all this were as a integer, so it treated as a long, and name as a string, and nullable equal to true, nullable equal to true for both the columns. So this is how Spark infer schema very well. It's uh, very trained in inferring the schema, but sometimes let's say these are the very small two columns, uh, uh, two columns data set. Let's say uh, you have a requirement and. <coughs> where you are dealing with a complex data set and and your data source is very dirty you don't so in uh, in that case actually you have to provide your schema so what data you are going to get and what is schema you are going to apply it on on those uh, data so let's uh, for applying those schema i want to input some couple of types from from sql types and let's see how we are going to uh, give custom schema uh, to the uh, to uh, file while reading the data while creating the data frame for that import from pi spark dot sql dot type import sorry this should be from from by spark dot sql dot types dot uh, dot 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 types import 
construct field so you have a lot of other types you can actually uh, import but right now I mean three to four types uh, I am needing to create a schema that's why I'm importing only those functions struct field integer type string type and one more I want to import struct type okay so fine so everything was fine so it executed successfully now we have all this the very next step what we have to do we have to actually create a schema for that I'm taking variable name data schema data schema is nothing but a list of struct field struct field and this struct field take parameter one is called the what the name you want to give let's say age and what the data type you want to give so I want to give age as an integer data type so it's depend depending upon how your data and what uh, uh, data type suits for your column so you want you want you're free to give any any data type as per your need and the last thing is last parameter is true or false so basically what it is doing it's telling to create a data schema data schema is nothing it's it's going to take it, it's a list of a struct field so one is, uh, is every single item uh, in this data schema is going to represent a one column and that column how the schema is defined here so you have to take a struct field the very fir first parameter is the column of the name of your column the second type the second uh, parameter is the data type of that column and whether it is allow it is going to allow null or not so it's true means it is it can keep null value and another one is the second one is let's say struct field the second one let's say name this this must be string type and this is also going to be true so we have created the data schema I am executing this so integer type is not defined what happened we have imported right okay so a spelling was wrong so it successfully ran now we have data schema from this data schema uh, we should finally create a final struct final underscore so this will this is your final structure how your data is going to looks like for that struct type okay if I fields so this is a parameter okay so here you can see a lot of parameters are there if fields so we fields is basically telling uh, it's a it is going to take a struct field so that's why fields is equal to this data schema so this also ran successfully so we have now the final structure in struct type basically a every uh, if you want to create a custom data type so everything finally comes as a struct type so we have final schema here now let's try to again import the same again load the same JSON file and create a data frame and see what is going to happen so df is equal to spark dot read dot JSON the, the file path is we can copy if you want to save some time so same same JSON file okay here we 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 have to give one more parameter i will show you so what are the parameters available so uh, it is not showing so uh, the parameter is actually called a schema so you can tell what the schema is 
means in last remember we haven't declared any schema here so spark internally automatically infer the schema of the json file here we have created the custom uh, schema and we want to apply this schema to this people.json file so a schema is equal to the final struct type final underscore struct so let's see what happens yeah so it's created a data frame see sql data frame dot data frame it's created now quickly check the data the data will be same because we we didn't modify anything inside the data now let's print the schema df dot print the schema see the difference so this time we created a schema it should be integer type and nullable equal to true names would be uh, string type and it's allow null so same uh, schema apply af uh, after reading and uh, after reading the json file and applying uh, and after the data frame is going to uh, have these two things a is name integer string but remember when we didn't apply any schema so this uh, this same data set was taking a as a long and name as a string but we changed here in while creating this custom schema we change as a as integer type and we remove that long long type so that's why finally you are seeing a as an integer and there a was as a long so that's how we can s we can say the we successfully applied the custom schema to this json file so these are the very basic operations we just uh, did uh, how to load the data uh, how to what are the ta what are, what are the uh, imports we have to do how we uh, how we can able to create the spark session spark object and how we can read the json file how we can actually show how we can actually print the schema how we can actually uh, import some types in order to create custom schema and apply custom schema to the incoming uh, any data files we are going to uh, receive so we created struct field finally we created struct type then we apply this same schema we apply this schema to while reading the json file again same json file and finally we have the custom schema is integer name string so uh, we are going to upcoming with the last uh, again uh, in the very other uh, data frame ba uh, basics operations so that's all for this video thanks for watching have a good day bye